Hi everybody, Ruth Rumack here, founder and executive director of education at Ruth Rumack's Learning Space, and I have more back to school tips for you. Today is episode two out of five, getting and staying organized. Now, I strongly believe that organization is a key factor in student success. Being organized, we know, reduces stress and it saves time and helps us keep focused. So today I'm going to give you tips for three organizational hotspots binders, backpacks, and desks. Let's get started with binders. There are many kinds of binders on the market. I recommend, I recommend choosing the one that is big enough for what you need, but not too big that it becomes a catch-all. I also prefer a D-ring binder. I find it's gentler on loose leaf paper. Now, I've had many debates with students as to what is better, one binder for everything, two binders for a two-day schedule, or a binder for each subject. And I really think it's a matter of preference and learning style. If the student has a tendency to forget things, fewer binders are probably better. Either way, I recommend setting up each binder with dividing tabs and labeling them. Use a label maker. I love to make labels. I like the plastic dividers that have pockets on each side because the pockets can be used to keep your course outlines and current assignment sheets handy. And it's also a good idea to stock the binder with lined and graph paper. Also, a small three hole pencil case that's designed to fit in a binder is handy to keep the essentials. Now, students should get in the habit of dating all their work and any loose sheets that come their way. Now, even the most Pinterest worthy binder will be ineffective if it is not maintained. So I recommend a daily or at minimum a weekly binder cleanup. We'll talk more about that later. Let's move on to backpacks. Sometimes the backpack becomes an extension of the binder or more accurately, a replacement for the binder. You know what I'm talking about? A mix of crumpled papers, sweaty gym clothes, forgotten lunches. However, like the binder, with regular maintenance, it too can be a beautiful thing. So first of all, make a weekly backpack clean out date. Get the whole family involved, put on some fun music, find a clear surface, a table or the floor and dump. Dump, 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 dump it all out. Open all the zippers, all the pockets, shake it till there's nothing left inside. Then sort. Group all like things together. Create piles for each subject or category. It might help to put sticky notes out to remind you what each pile represents. Recycle papers that aren't needed. And if you think that you might need a paper at a later date, but you don't need a physical copy, take a picture or use a scanning app to create a PDF. You can save it to your computer. We're gonna have more tech tips in a later episode, so stay tuned later this week. And any papers that aren't needed in the binder, but are still needed for the year, you can keep them in an accordion file or a desk box file or a file cabinet, somewhere that's handy. Look at each pile. Hole punch any papers that need it. Invest in a good hole punch. Uh, it's well worth it. Use the dates that you've already put on your pages to organize in chronological order and then put them back in the binders. Now, some students prefer to do reverse chronological order because they see the most recent work first as soon as they open that section. Again, it's a matter of preference and it's up to you. The backpack should be big enough to fit all the binders for the day, a water bottle, lunch box, a computer, some extra clothes, who knows. But some students keep a smaller bag, it's easier on the back, uh, and they use a carabiner clip on the outside to hold their water bottle or their lunch box. Okay, last but not least, the desk or homework area. This is a hardworking area of the house and you wanna make sure it's stocked with the right supplies. This saves time and frustration if you can find what you are looking for quickly. If it's a shared space, you might wanna dedicate a shelf or a cubby or a basket for each person so that things don't get mixed up. Now, of course, lighting and seating are also important. Um, and many people ask me, where is the best place to set up a desk? The kitchen, the bedroom, the basement. I think you really have to think about the person it's for. If you feel as a parent, you need to supervise more then a more common space is better. If you have a busy household with a lot of distractions, then a more secluded space may be better. Also, if you have to compromise and it's a combination of both, noise canceling headphones in a busy area may be helpful. 
So it really depends on the situation. Now look, there are so many things I could talk about. I could be sharing for hours, but I think I've got, uh, I've given you enough tips to get you started. So join me tomorrow for episode three, motivation for a new school year. And if you have questions or comments, please leave them below, like us and subscribe. That's all for now. Happy learning.